Lesson 12.8, Compare Units of Time. If you're a little rusty about telling time, there's going to be a link to the third grade math playlist, and if you go to chapter 10, that will refresh your memory from what you learned last year. An analog clock has an hour hand, that's this short one, a minute hand, that's this longer blue one, and a second hand, that's this very thin long one, to measure time. And this clock shows the time is 7.30 and 7 seconds, or 30 minutes and 7 seconds after 7. And we can write this time as 7.30 and 7 seconds. See how we use two colons? So this is the hour, this is the minutes, and this is the seconds. There are 60 seconds in one minute. There are 60 minutes in one hour. We can skip count seconds or minutes by fives. We have our minute hand, and it'll be the same with the second hand. When it's at the 12, that's zero minutes or zero seconds. When we move it to the one, that's five minutes, and it could even be five seconds. We go five, 10, 15, 20, and so on, all the way around, here's 59, and then back at the 12 would be 60, and it would start at zero again, and then we'd go one, two, three, four, five again. This clock is showing the hour at the four, so it's four o'clock, and because the minute hand is pointing directly to the 12, it's exactly four o'clock. When one second passes, this green second hand moves clockwise one small line, one little tiny line, and it goes from four o'clock and becomes four o'clock and one second. So the minute hand and the hour hand stayed the same, but the second hand moved one tiny little line. When one minute passes, it's 60 seconds, that's one minute, and the minute hand moves clockwise one small line. So it went from the 12 to one little line past the 12. It went from 4 o'clock and it becomes 4.01. This clock is pointing to 4 o'clock. When one hour passes, it's 60 minutes. The hour hand moves clockwise to the next number. 4 o'clock becomes 5 o'clock. The minute hand has made one full turn around the clock face, and the hour hand moved to the next number. Each full turn of the minute hand is one hour, no matter where the minute hand has started from. This is 2.30. We see the hour hand is in between the 2 and the 3, so it's not 3 yet. It's still in the 2s, and because the minute hand is pointing to the 6, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes. We have 2.30. If the minute hand goes around one full time, then the hour hand moves in between the 3 and the 4. It's now 3.30. One hour is 60 times greater than one minute. One minute is one of 60 equal parts of an hour. One minute is one sixtieth of an hour. One minute is six times greater than one second. And one second is one of sixty equal parts of a minute. So one second is one sixtieth of a minute. We can compare the size of an hour to the size of a second. Sixty seconds is equal to one minute, and sixty minutes is equal to one hour, we multiply 60 times 60 to find the seconds in an hour. 60 seconds times 60 minutes is equal to one hour. We do 60 times 60, and we get 3,600 seconds is equal to one hour. So there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. One second is one of 3,600 equal parts of an hour. An hour is 3,600 times longer than a second. Emma spent three hours babysitting, 
Tala spent 300 minutes babysitting. Who spent more time babysitting? We're comparing three hours to 300 minutes. We need to change units before comparing. Because we're comparing three hours to 300 minutes, we need to first convert, that means change, the three hours into minutes. We convert the larger units into the smaller units. We need to compare minutes to minutes. One hour is equal to 60 minutes, so because we have three of them, we have three 60s. We have three times 60 minutes. That's 180 minutes. 180 minutes is less than 300 minutes, which means three hours is less than 300 minutes. To compare different units, we change the units before comparing them, and we change the larger units into the smaller units, the hours into the minutes. And we can also make a table that relates hours and minutes. We know one hour is equal to 60 minutes. That's one times 60. So two hours would be two 60s. We would do two times 60. That would be equal to 120 minutes. And three hours would be three 60s. Three times 60. That would be 180 minutes. And we could make our table longer, couldn't we? We can use a number line to compare the length of one week to the length of one day. We have a number line going from zero to seven. There are seven days in one week. Here is one day and here is one week. One week is seven times greater than one day. One day is one of seven equal parts of a week, so one day is one seventh of a week. A week is seven times longer than a day. So one day is one seventh of a week. It's one of seven equal parts. So two days would be two of seven equal parts. It would be two sevenths of a week. Three days would be three sevenths. Four days would be four sevenths. We have five days is five sevenths. Six days is six sevenths. And seven days, because there's seven days in one week, would be seven days out of the seven same numerator and denominator, we have one full week. We can use a number line to compare the length of a year to the length of a month. There are 12 months in one year. So here's one little month, and this is one entire year. One year is 12 times as long as one month. One month is equal to one twelfth of a year. So two months would be equal to two twelfths. And we can put that in simplest form as one sixth of a year. Remember, we find a common factor for two and 12, and they have the number two in common. We do two divided by two, which is one, and 12 divided by two, which is six. And if you are confused about that, there's a link to how to do simplest form in video 6.3 that we did before. Just check the description. There are 24 hours in one day. So how many hours are in three days? We think we can multiply 24 hours by the three days. If 24 hours is one day and we're looking for three days, we would have three 24s. We would do 24 times three. So there are 72 hours in three days. It takes one day for the Earth to make one complete rotation on its axis. It takes one year for the Earth to revolve around the Sun. A leap year was added to our calendar so the calendar would match Earth's orbit time. And leap years are every four years and add an extra day to our calendar as February 29th as a leap day. The other years only go to February 28th. So how many days are in five years? So we think there are 365 days in a regular year. And the fourth year would have 366 days, that extra day, one more. We can make a table showing one year is 365 days. So that would be 365 days, one times 365. 
We can do 3. 65 times 2, that would be 2 years, times the 365, that would be 730 days. And we can do 3 years times the 365, that would give us 1,095 days. And when we get to that fourth year, we have to do the 365 plus that one more day. So we would do 4 years times the 365 days in a year plus that one extra day. For 5 years, there's 365 days in a year plus this one more from the fourth year. So we would do 5 times 365 days in a year plus the one more from that fourth year. So it would be plus 1. We would have 1,826 days in 5 years because of that leap year. So remember there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in one day, 365 days in one year, 12 months in one year. And we're going to talk about problem solving with elapsed time and some strategies in our next lesson, 12.9. We're going to draw a diagram or make a table to help us with elapsed time. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.